Hey, boys and girls, this is Mr. Bell. Today we're going to be talking about subtracting fractions. <coughs> Excuse me. Um, kind of like with the adding subtractions, it's not that difficult. Um, you just may encounter basically two different types of scenarios. Um, and I don't think I'm going to go over all the examples. I got like, uh, I don't know, like six examples. It seems like a lot, but um, just keep in mind, I'm going to skip the, the ones with the same uh, denominator simply because if they're the same, all you have to do is subtract the um, second fraction's numerator from the first fraction. I, let me tell you what, let me just do that just to be on the safe side. All right, let's say I got seven eighths and I want to subtract five eighths. Okay, basically the bottom stays the same and I just subtract five from seven, which is two. That can be simplified to um, one fourth. Okay, and that would be my final answer. So there's there's not much to. I'm not going to spend a lot of time on that. That's not real difficult to do. So just you know, go back and rewatch this if necessary. All right. Um, same thing with a mixed number. Let's see, one and three fifths minus one fifth. Um, I don't have to, since I can actually subtract the one from the three, I really don't have to do anything else. I can leave the one as it is. And then three minus one is two fifths. And then that would be my final answer. Another alternative is to turn the, uh, mixed number into an improper fraction where I would multiply this and add this five plus one, five times one plus three is eight fifths minus one fifth. And then you can just subtract and get seven fifths. Seven fifths is improper, so you would divide, so it would go one, and then you would have two remainder over five. Okay, so same thing really. Uh, I, you know, I actually kind of like the idea of turning a mixed number into an improper fraction, so you know, that may be the way to go. All right, let's see. Uh, next example. All right, so this is the, this is the advantage you get if you're if you're turning into an improper fraction each time. Um, here I have the same denominator, so that's good. We want that, but I'm trying to subtract two from one. You can't really do that. So what I have to do is I have to borrow from this one and it's not that difficult, but what I'm going to do instead is I'm just going to turn this whole thing into an improper fraction. Cause if I had a five here, you know, I got to keep track of all my borrowing. So I'm not going to do that. So three times one is three plus one is four over three minus two thirds. Now I can subtract the two from the four, which is two over three. And my answer is two thirds. So that's it. That's all there is to it. Um, I would probably just go ahead and turn any mixed number into an improper fraction. And I don't think you can lose that way. All right. Um, next example, one half minus one third. Okay, here we have two different denominators, so we got to use LCM again to come up with the least common denominator. So I list the multiples of two and I list the multiples of three, two, four, six, eight, ten. I'll just do that. Three, six, nine, twelve. All right, I think we got enough. Let's go ahead and look. Uh, there's not another two, there's not another four, but there is a six. So six is going to be my least common denominator. Six and six. So what did I multiply th two by to get six? I multiplied by three. So that means I got to multiply the top number by three. Three times one is three. I multiplied the bottom number times two here. So I got to multiply the top times two. One times two is two. I can subtract two from three much easier than I can uh, subtracting, uh, well, one from one. All right. So anyway, three, uh, two from three is one and my denominator stays the same. Okay. There we go. That is subtracting those. I got a couple more examples like mixed numbers and whatnot. So let's go ahead and get these knocked out and I'll let you guys go. All right, so next example, and I'm just going to do the one. I'm going to do the double. All right, two and one half minus one and two thirds. I think this has some borrowing involved, but we're just going to go ahead and let's just say we're going to multiply both of these and get them into improper fraction form. All right, so 
2 times 2 is 4, plus 1 is 5. Oh, wait, over 2. Well, I, yeah, we can do this first. 3 times 1 plus 2 is 5, over 3. So it looks like we can just subtract those two 5s, but we can't really because we got still two different denominators. So we got to fix that. Uh, once again, uh, I don't think I have it anymore. Multiples of 3 and 2. 2, 4, 6, 3, 6, 9. We got the 6 in common. So I'm going to rewrite this with 6 in the denominator. All right. What did I multiply 2 by to get 6? Well, I multiplied times 3. So 5 times 3 is 15. Then what did I multiply 3 by to get 6? Well, I multiplied by 2. So 5 times 2 is 10. Now I can go ahead and subtract. 15 minus 10 is 5. And the denominator stays the same. I can't simplify it, so that's my final answer. So I guess as a point of interest, when you're sub adding or subtracting uh, fractions, uh, make sure you have a common denominator. Well, you have to have a common denominator. It's not like it's an option. And just follow the regular rules of subtraction at that point.